Dom here from Orange Systems, and what if you have a cable run that exceeds the maximum distance of 100 meters or 300 feet? Well, this Cat6 cable has no problem, of course, doing that 100 meters or 300 feet, but what if we got to go a little beyond it? Yeah, I know it'll work, and I say that kind of loosely because I've talked about out-of-spec cabling before on this channel, and yes, you can usually go a little beyond the spec, and I've dove into some of the reasons why with Dan Barrera, and I can leave links to those very technical videos down below, but let's just talk about a simple solution of putting a repeater in. Now, I've talked previously, and I'll leave a link to it, of using the Game Changer cable for being able to break that 100 meter, 300 foot limit, but what if there's an easier way when you have an existing run and someone says, hey, that run that's at that distance, can it go, I don't know, maybe another 100 meters? That's where this device comes in. This is the Mikrotik GPER. So I went ahead and bought one because many people had asked me about them and I actually was not aware of them. So thank you to those of you that commented and uh, brought these up and tagged me on Twitter. Pretty cool little device. It's pretty inexpensive here. This is not sponsored or endorsed in any way by Mikrotik. We bought these off Amazon. Links will be down below. Before we dive into the details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a share a project, there's a hires button right at the top. Network design and network consulting, a lot of what people hire is for. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on the channel. And yes, there's an Amazon affiliate link to get one of these devices. Let's talk about the scenario we have set up here. First, we got about, oh, I don't know, just about 300 feet of cable inside this box here. And I didn't have another half empty box or even 500 foot box we only had thousand foot box in stock so i just linked together an additional 150 feet in cable now for this test we've got this plugged into a usg poe switch and uh i got a camera unify poe camera but i've also tested this with the unify wi-fi now one of the things that happens right away here is of course at this distance it breaks as in the poe light comes on when i plug this camera in but uh no actual camera working so i'll get a little poe link light but camera never links it sits here for a long time trying back and forth and the drop off of this distance is just too great for it to be able to be functional no need to actually sit down and watch it try it doesn't ever solve the problem so that's where this device comes in and this is the gpr Gigabit passive ethernet repeater. It's as simple as it sounds. Yes, it does gigabit. Yes, it's passive. I'm probably gonna order a second one. I didn't realize until after we got this one that you can extend them uh, a couple hops out. I've had people tell me they put them more than that in there, but their recommendation is uh, the GPR unit allows ethernet extended cable by an additional hop, 100 to 150 meters, for regular net device and up to 210 meters to another GPR unit. So let me order another one if there's enough comments on there about that. But either way, a lot of times just getting that one extended because there's obviously still going to be loss when you start going that far. Some PoE devices may or may not have enough wattage because yes, the PoE passes through the device. That's an important factor here. But let's show it working right here. They have a suggested retail price of $16. The other day when I looked on Amazon, uh, when we bought them, they were like $25 on Amazon Prime. So they're within that range. We did pick up this right here, the IP67 case as well. So I have that. We're going to take a closer look at this briefly, but this is a waterproof case for this device. There's nothing particularly special for it, but if you're doing this outdoors uh, or an industrial area, and actually I just kind of like the way it's made. So for as inexpensive as this is, also available on Amazon, uh, yeah, I would highly recommend getting this. Let's talk about the connectivity, the jumpers. And yes, it does have jumpers. So they have the connecting. They do have what it supports, which is passive PoE power 802.3 AF at DC 24 to 57 volts. It'll pass through whichever voltage is needed. Now, this is for passing through PoE devices. What if you want to hook it up to a non-PoE device? You want to extend it to, oh, I don't know, any other switch or just another computer that happens to be further away than the distance of the cable. Well, it actually has these little jumpers you pull off and uh, pretty simple, you pop those off, but you do have to force passive 24 volts to the system. Now, if you force passive 24 volts through it and don't pull the jumpers off, it'll still work, but it'll also bring the 24 volts all the way across to the other side. But if you pull the jumpers off on the PoE outside, because uh, it has an in and an out, this will allow you to have passive voltage in but not pass any voltage out. So let's take an overhead look right at the parts here. Now here's a closer look at the device itself. There's those two little jumpers for the PoE in, 
and two little jumpers for the PoE out. They just kind of pop out. Yes, I'm using a dental pick because they're uh, a little tricky to get out, but that's all they have. Oh, there we went. There went one, and then we can pop the other one out, and that's all you have to do to put it in passive mode to put another device in there. But they do have a note in the documentation. Note which way the jumpers go. They go this way and not this way across. So no big deal there. Now, from an overhead look on it, there's nothing really on the back side, and we just have RJ45 ends on each side. Now, as I stated, this pile of cable right here exceeds the distance that this camera will work. So we're actually going to set the camera up right here and get this plugged in. And it's just on a 3D printed stand. Someone will probably ask if I will find the link that we 3D printed this stand for this unified camera. Uh, this is now our little lab camera that we do for testing. But we're going to go ahead and plug this in and we find the end here of this cable. And we're going to take this little jumper. So to give you an idea of the distance, first we went the 300 feet, 100 meters on this box here. We're going to take this and POE in because the POE out is here. So it goes in through the box over to here and we'll go to POE in. All right. Nothing lights up. And I want to point that out right away in case you're wondering if it's broke. Unless you're forcing the PoE in, nothing lights up until you plug in a PoE device at this end or you force passive 24 volt into this device. So now we're going to plug it into our extra 50, 100, 150, 200. We have 200 more feet of cable right here. Uh, yes, it's been kind of just put together with a, this is all some prefab cable with just a few connectors, but hey, don't worry. We tested this for a while. It's been running uh, since the other day and it works perfectly fine. This does get slightly warm. Now let's take a look again at the overhead and we see the first light come on. And after a moment, when the camera lights up, I just heard the camera go click. I'm pretty sure it won't pick that up in a second. You're going to see the other light that confirms it negotiated and is now passing through the power needed to run this camera. And, uh, Yep, there we go. Now it's passing data. So that's it. There's nothing, no other lights on this. There's no lights on the end of it. The only lights are right here. But it's actually really handy having them in the middle right here. And there we go. The camera's working. So you see me moving the camera. It's pointing at the studio. Point it back at me. There's a little bit of a delay. We can have it looking down at what it's connected through. And that's really it. It's that simple to get that extra range. It's, it's a dead simple device out of the box, no configuration really to do. And if you want to put it in a waterproof thing, we're going to show you that next. So this is kind of proof. And like I said, we ran this test for a while to know that it works. And this only gets ever so slightly warm, not anything that I would be concerned with in terms of heat. But now let's talk about the actual container that you can put it in for waterproofing it. The device by itself comes with this little bracket that will clip on like that to hold it so you can put it in the wall, mount it to something, an anchor and a screw. Then we have these devices and these little ends here. This is where it gets a little bit more clever. So this is the actual, we'll take these little ends off, show you the inserts. You put these inserts in here, run the cable through, put the ends on the cable and there's one on each side that this comes apart. So each one of these comes apart. Drop these in here, you'd run the cable through it. And then this comes apart right here. And as you can see, this fits right in. Just drop this in. So you'd push the cables through, pull them through, clip that in there. Now, this is where I think this is clever. These little clips right here, the ones that would hold the device by itself, will also clip onto here. They're all the same. The one that holds the unit itself, they made this the same. So this would go here and now you can mount it outside to a wall or however you want. So now you can, you know, have it mounted outside too. Very, uh, actually I think I have it upside down. There we go. Clicks in there pretty good. So it stays pretty sturdy. There's this little click on there and then you just end up with one extra one in case you drop someone somewhere where you're doing it outside, but hey, cool that it has that. But overall, it's a pretty simple device. The only thing of note is when you shove these in here, this gets stuck in there and uh, you have to push it back out like that. Uh, it jams in there pretty good, pretty tight, but leaves a little bit of an air gap around it when you're looking through it. But overall, I think this is a pretty cool solution. A lot of people have said they really like these. I've talked to a few of my tech friends who have used them. And of course, some of you commented on them as where I discovered them as when people had watched a video of me talking about the Game Changer cable, which I'll leave a link to. It's, I still think that's another solution. But if you 
want to take something like this, you have this extended area you got to go through and you want to go that extra distance and have the PoE go through, I think this is a pretty cool solution for that. So I want to turn a few people on to it. Uh, this is Tom Lawrence and you can find me over in the forums or uh, comment down below on what you think of this or maybe tell me about your use cases you have for it. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.